I will be quite fast. So I, I will uh, describe for you some effects of medicinal wild edible plants of the Mediterranean basin in human innate immunity uh, in respect with intracellular bacterial pathogen infections. Uh, we, so how to proceed? Uh, if I just move ahead, it goes. Yeah, yeah just press the right hand arrow on your keyboard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it, nothing happens. Or uh, just click, uh, just click on the slide, it will automatically move ahead. Okay, okay. So we studied uh, in particular two medicinal wild edible plants uh, and uh, the infection, the, their effect on the human monocyte derived macrophages, which are the very early player cells in innate immunity uh, towards infection, infected with Staphylococcus aureus, which is a human pathogen, which it normally lives on the skin, but can become pathogenic in, in different condition. Uh, it was described as a facultative intracellular pathogen, but now it's clear that it can really infect uh, cells. Uh, and then also it gives rise uh, to a, uh, an um, antibiotic resistant uh, strain that is the methylcycline resistant Staphylococcus aureus, which is an hospital associated infection, so it's really relevant. The first one is Lavandula angustifolia, Miller, that is lavender, and we use the essential oil. The second one is hazelnut, the Corylus avellana, a particular cultivar that we have here in Rome. And in, uh, this is an hydroalcoholic extract. Uh, just referring to the previous question, we are also preparing our herbal extracts because we want to be uh, fairly sure that we uh, collected the plant in the first, uh, in the right uh, um, period uh, in which the plant contains the right uh, compounds. And also we would like to prepare all the possible extract uh, starting from essential oil, if the plant is aromatic or hydroalcoholic, alcoholic or water extract. So um, the in vitro antibacterial effect to lavender um, was already assessed either alone or in combination with other essential oil, but the studies on the immune stimulation mediated by its essential oil in the course of macrophage infection are lacking. And also for, um, I don't know how to move this, uh, this part, okay. Uh, also for hazelnut, uh, the, the EFSA has recently published a, a scientific article describing the Uglans regia, the walnut, uh, uh, claims uh, to maintain the normal blood low density lipoprotein cholesterol concentration. Um, the immune system, as already all people know, plays an important role in the development, progression, and complication associated with atherosclerosis. So we wanted, we wondered whether hazelnut has a possible effect on the human innate response. Okay, so uh, first of all, we try to measure the direct antibacterial effect of um, lavandula essential oil, and we compared the, the controlled environment uh, uh, of the plant, I mean the plant grown in a greenhouse, in which you can decide all the environmental conditions, and the natural environment plant essential oil that is exposed to all the possible stimuli, UV, pathogen attack, uh, uh, climate changes and so on, that we know, now we are learning a lot of things on these plants, uh, and in Italy they are known uh, since a lot of time, that such stimuli, they really increase the, the um, secondary metabolism of the plants and the production of uh, very important uh, class of compounds. As you see from the diameter of the wool zone of inhibition, the natural environment oil, just because we studied the composition, but I'm, I'm not going to show it now, uh, is, uh, is able to inhibit much more the, the grow because you see this clear zone on the agar plate that is free of bacteria, then they control the environment and this resulted statistically significant. Then we decided that uh, we uh, wonder was the, was, the, was, was the, effect, the effect of this oil treatment at a very high dilution on human monocyte macrophages infected with the Staphylococcus aureus, as I told you. And as you see here, the natural environment, this NE, 
essential oil, was able to significantly increase the phagocytosis rate. Because first of all, the macrophage is uh, the scavenger cell that arrives to the site of infection and phagocytose all the bacteria um, in the site. This was not the same for the, the controlled environment and from now on we continued with the natural environment. We were quite surprised in finding that the group of uh, 10 donors, because we take, we, we take the <clears throat> uh, macrophages from the wood blood of LT donors, uh, um, of LT blood donors, reacted in a biphasic way. That means that as compared to the control cells, uh, one group uh, treated with the, um, uh, with the oil reduced further the intracellular uh, replication of S. aureus, the other, uh, conversely, either uh, even enhanced, so reacted negatively to this treatment. We uh, normally study the gene expression of the cells uh, that we infect and treat, and we found that what we call the, the positive responding group, uh, the one that reduced the intracellular uh, load of the bacteria, were able to immediately upregulate the transcription of NADPH uh, uh, subunits as uh, uh, cytochrome B, uh, B subunit and NCF4 and the lysosome. So the very first uh, equipment of the immune cells to actively destroy the intracellular bacteria. In the same time, they also downregulated two very powerful cytokines, pro-inflammatory cytokines, which are IL-6 and IL-1A. Uh, Tollip, okay, this, now I, I see that I'm too long <laughs> with the time, so I will go quite quick, but uh, uh, w w for me it's important to underline that amyoxygenase is another gene upregulated by the positive responding group. Uh, amyoxygenase is uh, uh, able to cleave the M ring uh, uh, the, the, of free M, that is a highly inflammatory protein, to form biliverdine, subsequently converted to bilirubin, that exhibit cytoprotective effect. So, in a way, we have a cell that, once stimulated with the essential oil of this medicinal plant, immediately attack the intracellular bacteria, but do not enhance inflammation, do not enhance the inflammatory burst. Uh, so, in conclusion, for the first part of Lavandula, the study showed a correlation between a protective effect of the natural environment essential oil and its anti-inflammatory activity during the early phase of S. aureus infection, which resulted donor-dependent. And this is interesting also in the, in the second study. This effect was possibly exerted by the positive regulation of genes involved in the very early antibacterial equipment, as I told you. Um, but also we support the role of an early involvement of amoxygenase in the fine regulation of the immune response to a serious infection by preventing the occurrence of cytotoxic oxidative burst. Because as Carl Nadan says many times, the problem is not, uh, the problem of inflammation is not its value, its value is very important, the problem is to control it. So to discharge immediately all the equipment, the antimicrobial equipment, but then to bring back the cells to the initial homeostasis. This is a very big uh, issue. Uh, for Carlos Avellana, as I told you, we, we have used the hydroalcoholic extract because this plant is not aromatic. And we have used the kernel um, to, to prepare this extract. And again, we found that the donors were divided. This time we, st we, we tried uh, different dilutions and they were the highest dose responders uh, that are comparable to the positive responders uh, that I showed you before, which responded very well in diminishing the CFU load, the, the, the colony forming units intracellularly replicating in the cells. And those responded well to the most diluted I mean, the one is uh, one to 1,000, the three is one to 100,000. Again, when we study the gene expression of the studies, of these cells, sorry, 
the, the experimental model is this one. We treat the cells and we start and we compare it to the untreated. We infect the cells and we compare it with the untreated. We treat one hour before and then infect two hours and then we compare with the infected one. And in this way, we have a quite complex picture. But if we just look at the high dose responders, which are treated and subsequently infected, we again find <clears throat> that we have the upregulation of genes which are involved in the anti-inflammatory response, as CD39 and Adora B2, which are two genes uh, uh, collaborating to uh, the, uh, helping the cells to break inflammation. Uh, the receptor for the oxidized low-density lipoprotein 1, hemioxygenase, again, that is highly, highly um, upregulated, uh, and we have some important genes uh, um, associated with the iron metabolism. This is another important uh, component of the oxidative bust of the cells through the fentanyl reaction. Another gene very important is STREM1, which is the triggering receptor expressed on myeloid cells, which, as the, its name says, triggers the inflammatory response. That is of course, at the beginning, very, it's very important, but then it should have been uh, regulated to come back to the initial phase. In the same time, these cells, which limit uh, under treatment the S-Aurus intracellular uh, replication, do the downregulate the lipoxygenase 5 and 15, and down regulate the ferritin H and the transferrin receptor 1. Transferrin receptor is uh, the receptor for the uh, transferrin bound iron that is able for the cell's metabolism. When the infection uh, is um, sensed by the cell as dangerous, the transferrin receptor down regulation does not allow iron to enter anymore in the cells because also the pathogens do fight very hard for the iron in the cells. Um, okay, this is just a, a picture for the real time that we made for all the three steps, confirming what I already told you. But uh, what uh, I want to show you is also that by studying the different isoform of TREM, the triggering receptor expressed on myeloid cells, we found that importantly, the positive responders do upregulate also the soluble form of TREM, that is the uh, shed form not anymore uh, bound to the membrane that, in, that in, in an autocrine way is able to bind and to block the triggering effect of TREM. So it's a sort of autocrine regulation immediately after the initial triggering. And this for us is really significant. And in the same time, as you see, interleukin-6 and TNF-alpha, they go down. If we go, we wonder whether <coughs> these macrophages uh, are, let's say, trained. There is a big debate among immunologists on the trained immunity. I mean, we keep the cells one week in the flask and we differentiate them by, by adhesion. So is that possible that they come from a circulatory environment in which already pro-inflammatory signal were present and conditionated their following uh, uh, maturation. This seems to be the case because in real time, again, we compare the low dose responders versus the high and in the, in the peripheral blood mononuclear cells from the very beginning, the, we take the bafficot from the transfusional center and we put them in culture. So before putting them in culture, we lyse them, we extract RNA and we measure the gene expression. This part of donors uh, do upregulate TREM in, at the starting point, and that regulate uh, epchidine, that is a, an antimicrobial peptide, do upregulate TNF alpha, that is a potent anti uh, inflammatory cytokine. Moreover, and I will go very fast to the conclusion, uh, these donors are different in their lipid metabolism uh, because the, the high dose responders have a higher HDL cholesterol a lower low density lipoprotein cholesterol that as already people here knows that goes undergoes to oxidation it contributes to inflammatory response and finally atherosclerosis and lower le level of um, triglycerides 
So we, we wanted to, okay, we go just here. Uh, we, we like to favor the hypothesis to interpret this data as a normatic process. Or Hormesis is uh, um, an effect that under center threshold is positive, so bring to an improvement, whereas at over this threshold it becomes detrimental. So we could imagine that for the high responder cells, we have a, a normative zone that goes from the lower to the higher concentration and give the beneficial effect as expected, because these cells, we can call them resting cells, not inflamed. What happens for the low responders, which are evidently inflamed cells, most probably the intracellular environment and the inflammatory stress uh, goes, uh, um, is, uh, at, is um, uh, added to the HLA stressor and move forward the hermetic zone toward a more diluted um, concentration. So this is just to, to, to um, summarize uh, what I already told you. And um, in conclusion, uh, the hazelnut uh, liquid extract exerted a biphasic effect on human monocyte derived macrophages infected with Asaurus as a result of the interaction between the dose of phytochemical stressor administered and the intracellular milieu inflammatory status at time zero. In other words, <clears throat> we favor the hypothesis that a pro inflamed macrophage with a high content of ROS, a low intracellular pH, and a metabolically active iron, ferrous iron, these are other data that I didn't bring here for, to be short, when treated with this polyphenols rich stressor will tolerate a much smaller dose as compared to less inflamed macrophages, even if we have to, to note that the low dose revealed to be beneficial also for these donors. But in this scenario, and I think here we have just the right people to listen on such uh, an issue, the individual initial inflammatory status and the lipid metabolism need to be analyzed in order to decide how to administer a phytocomplex. So I would like to, to thank all the people participating to the study, uh, you for your attention and um, I wait for your eventual questions. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Francesca. Any questions, participants? <clears throat> 